So as a business, first you have to you will have to your financial you need your financial record, yes. I want to talk about the financial statement you're talking about here. Yeah? You need the income statement which we get or explained previously, and also the balance sheet, which we have to explain now. So the combination of the income statement and the balance sheet gives you what we call the final account or the financial statement. So what is the balance sheet? I hope it's a financial record which indicates the assets, capital and liabilities of a business. It indicates the worth or value of the business. So if the business needs to know its worth or its value, it can know it through what? The balance sheet. Because then you will be there, you will be talking about your assets, your liabilities and the capital. So what are the assets cost? These are resources owned by the business. Example, land, fixture, machinery. So whatever the resources you have that belongs to the business, it is what we call an asset. So we have two types of assets. We have the non-coin assets. They can last more than a year, like the land, fixture, premises, building, machinery. They can last more than a year. That's what we call the non-coin assets. Then we have the current assets. These ones, they can't last more than a year. It's, they last within a year. So, example of your trade is available, your debtors, your cash, your stock. These ones, they cannot last more than a year. So we call them not current, we call them not, no, we call them current assets. Then we go to liabilities. So for liabilities, these are the resources the business is owing to third party. Whatever you are owing to the third party is a liability. Though you are using it in the business, but it does not belong to the business. That's why we call it liability. So look at here we have the non-coin liabilities and the current liabilities. For the non-coin liabilities, they can last more than a year. That means the business can owe them for over a year, like the loan, the mortgage. They can still, they can be borrowed for more than a year. Then we have the current liabilities. These ones do not last more than a year, like your trade payable, like your bank contracts. Then we go to the owner's equity, which is the same as the capital in the business. So this is also known as the capital. This is the fund given to the business by the owner. So the, the fund that the owners of the business give to the business is called owner's equity. So the business can use it for expansion. It can use it for basically for expansion or to continue operation. So, how do we calculate our owner's equity? Your total assets minus your total liabilities. So, to calculate your owner's equity, it is what? Total assets, the combination of your current assets and your non current assets, plus the combination of your minus the combination of your current liabilities plus your non current liabilities gives you your owner's equity. So, what are the uses of the balance sheet? Number one. Shareholders can see if their stake in the business has increased or fallen. What I'm trying to say here is, with your balance sheet, you will, you will be able to know as a shareholder if your shares has increased because it will, it will be shown in your shareholder's equity if it has increased or not. Two, shareholders can analyze how expansion has been paid for. So, for example, if your business has expanded, you will be able to know what method or what form of finance you get to expand your business. For example, it might have been you putting retained profit and like putting the profit you pay into the business as investing into the business. That is retained profit. So maybe the business has expanded through retained profit or a long-term liability like a loan. So expansion of the business can be noted, can be noted through the balance sheet on how the expansion has been paid for. What I'm saying again really is, if you have expanded the business and you used, you will be able to know if you have used your retained profit to expand the business or you have taken a loan from the bank to expand your business. The third one, working capital, working capital, it can also be, it can be calculated from the balance sheet. How do you calculate your working capital? Your working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. Your working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. It is not the same as owner's equity. For owner's equity, it is total assets minus total liabilities. So that's the difference between working capital and owner's equity. 
Then the fourth one, capital employed. You can also cap, you can also know or calculate your capital employed you, through your balance sheet data. So how do you calculate your capital employed? Your capital employed is shareholders equity plus non-coin liabilities. So capital employed, that means the amount of capital that has been injected into the business is calculated as shareholders fund plus non-coin liabilities. When you talk about shareholders fund, this could be the amount of money made through the sales of additional shares. And for non-coin liabilities, we're talking about loans taken from the banks. So look at what I wrote here. So this is the long-term and permanent capital that has been used to purchase the assets of the business. So if you have purchased assets from the business, because whenever you take a loan from the bank, you might have taken the loan because you want to expand your business, or you might have taken the loan because you want to purchase some non-coin assets like land, like premises, like auto bank. So when you do this, you are increasing your assets. But at the same time, you are increasing your liabilities if you are taking a non current liability. But if you have used your retained profit to purchase assets, it will only reduce your retained profit but increase your assets. I think that is clear. Then we have this table. You need to compare KL Co Limited and H Co Limited. Before we look at the table, they said, calculate the values of X, Y, and Z. Identify two types of non coin assets that these users are likely to own. Which company seems to be in a stronger financial position? So, all these things we have to know through this table. So, we start. We have our non coin assets with 50,000 for KL, HK 120,000. Then, the coin assets, inventories, account receivable, which is the same as your desktop, and the cash advance. This together will give you your total assets. So we need to find X, which is the total assets for KL Co Limited. So for KL Co Limited, it is 50,000 plus 12,000 plus 8,000 plus 1,000. That's 71,000. So X is 71. So in terms of total assets, KHA is better off in terms of total assets than KL Co. Then we go to the current liabilities. We have the non points of this. Total liabilities are this. Then we decide to calculate the total assets minus total liabilities. Total assets, total assets, and your total liabilities. So this, this minus this. So we have total assets with 71,000. Total liabilities with 38,000. So 71 minus 38. 71 minus 38. We have 11 here, which is 3. 6 here, which is 3. That's 3,000. So our total liability, total asset and total liability is 33,000. So when we have to compare KL Limited and H Co Limited, uh, Co Limited, in terms of liabilities, KL Limited has less liabilities than H K Co Limited. Then we go on. We are going to find the final thing here is the retained profit for the shareholders' equity. How do you calculate your shareholders' equity? Your shareholders' equity is your retained profit plus share capital, the amount of money you raise from selling shares. So, shareholders' equity is retained profit plus share capital. That gives us your shareholders' equity. For KL Co, we have the shareholders' equity. But for HK Co Limited, we don't know the retained profit. So how do we get the retained profit? Since share capital plus retained profit is shareholders equity, then it means shareholders equity minus share capital will give us retained profit. Shareholders equity minus share capital equals to retained profit. So that means 90,000 minus 75,000 gives us 15,000. So the share we take from it for HK Limited is fifteen thousand dollars. So X, we are done with X, Y, and Z. That is done. So B, you said I have found two types of non-coin assets that these businesses are likely to own. That means we're talking about non-coin assets that these, these businesses will own. One, they could have land. 
premises, even equipment, and so on. Then, they said, which country seems to be in a stronger financial position? So in terms of the stronger financial position, you have to base it on different criteria or criteria. One, we can check their assets. In terms of assets, HK has 190,000 worth of assets. KL has 71,000 worth of assets. So it means HK is better off in terms of assets than KL Limited. Then we can go to the total liabilities. For total liabilities, KL has 38,000. HK has 100,000, which means KL doesn't owe so much to creditors or loans, doesn't have so much loans to pay back. It has less liabilities than HK Limited, which might also something be which might also be something good for KL Limited. Then, in terms of the total assets minus the total liabilities, which is what your owner's equity. For the owner's equity. For the owner's equity, HK has more than KL Co. So that means HK will be paying more of dividends than KL Limited. That's what it means. Then the shareholders' equity. HK has 33 and KL has HK has 19, KL has 33. So all these things are what we put together to compare and contrast each business. I think it's